Hi guys and welcome to your favorite tech show where we show you how technology is impacting our world and how all of you can be a part of it. So what will we be doing today, Shanice? So the squad is probably watching this on a TV screen, laptop, tablet or some sort of smart device, right? So let's see. That's electricity, satellites, internet, wireless connectivity, smart TV maybe. And that's just obvious tech. What about the nitty-gritty science underlying everything? I've been going crazy thinking about how science is everywhere. From taking medicine when we're sick, driving cars, growing food, flying aeroplanes. But let's take a look at today's lineup. First up, the squad heads to the Cape Town Science Centre. Then we test you with a mind-boggling brain teaser. We meet Chief Imagination Officer Steve Sherman. And we get creative in the tech lab. Heck, what do you think? Is science really everywhere? I mean, we're going to be spending the entire episode talking all about it. I think science is definitely all around us and can be found in places most people don't even imagine. I also think that the world is one big science lab if we just give it a chance. Wow, heck! Here I was expecting a long definition and you surprised me with an opinion of your own. I love it! Next up, Amir and the squad went to form some opinions of their own at the Cape Town Science Centre, where they went to find out if science really is everywhere. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome to the Cape Town Science Centre. Today, me and the squad are here to investigate if science really is everywhere. I just have one question. Can science really be a part of our daily lives? Let's find out. Today, the Techno Squad are out in full force investigating super-sized science. Their first stop is the giant fingerprint workshop. Hi everyone. My name is Jared, I'll be your facilitator today, right? And like we mentioned, we are going to be doing something called giant fingerprints, right? Hi there, my name is Jared Kubik and uh, I am one of the science communicators here at the Cape Town Science Centre and the workshop I'll be presenting on is the giant fingerprints. Do you guys know where your fingerprints are? Yep. Can you point it to, at me? So our aim is to obviously educate the children on fingerprints and all the different types of fingerprints but mostly to remind the kids of how unique they are as an individual. I mean, something as small as a fingerprint can be seen all, all around us. If we go into someone's home, fingerprints are everywhere, just as science is everywhere. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is we're going to stamp our finger in our ink pad over here, something like this. And you guys are gonna hold it down for a good three seconds, three or two seconds, right? Once we lift up, you will see our finger is full of ink now. And then the next step is for us to open our balloon nice and wide and get a flat surface. Once we have our flat surface, we are gonna put our finger on the balloon and hold down for a good amount of time. Make sure the name of the workshop was um, the Fingerprint Workshop and I felt really excited when um, Jared showed us what we're going to do because I've never done it before. He gave us a balloon and um, he gave us an ink pad and dip our thumbs in whichever finger you want and dip it onto the balloon. Next up, the squad got to try it out for themselves. Let's take a look. What we learned in the fingerprint room was a uh, surface area. And then, then you put, put ink on your finger and then you uh, stretch out a balloon and then put it on. When, when you blow it up, it becomes, uh, it expands and it becomes bigger. So you said it's a loop? Finally, they got to identify what type of fingerprint each of them had. I actually did think about my fingerprints before the workshop and I, um, I always wondered what type of fingerprint I had. I think you have a wall? Mm. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, definitely. So you guys can see how the lines are going over there. And then there's the wall right at the bottom of your finger. Well done. You think yours is a loop as well? So you identified it on your small finger. Let's have a see. There are not only three types of fingerprints that you can have there. Those are just the com most common three. And everyone's fingerprint is unique. So me, myself, I actually got the loop. Uh, I think it was 
Out of the four of us, only three got the loop and then one of us got the whirl. On the projector, there was three types of slides and I um, got the loop. I never actually knew that each one had their own unique fingerprint up until today. Next. And the thing that I enjoyed most about it was probably when I figured out what type of fingerprint I had. What I enjoyed most is that we got to um, dip our thumbs in the ink and then put it on the balloon. Guys, I'm starting to see why they say sizes everywhere. I mean, it's right at our fingertips. did there. But I agree, science is right at our fingertips. All we have to do is start being scientists. And I don't mean the lab and white coat kind of scientist. I mean being interested in and curious about our world by asking questions and making observations. Kind of like our next guest. He is the Chief Imagination Officer at NGO Living Maths, has won Global Teacher Awards. He is a TEDx speaker, a Microsoft Innovative Education Expert and so much more. Please welcome Steve Sherman. Welcome, Steve. Our squad has some questions prepared for you. So, Amir, you can go up first. Hi, Steve. So, you, so you are a chief imagination officer. So, I wanted to know why do you call yourself that and what exactly do you do? Well, Amir, that's a very good question. And the truth is that when I was in grade one, my teacher wrote in my report that I have a vivid imagination, I'm often daydreaming in class, and I'm living in an imaginary world. Now, to most people, that wouldn't be a great thing for a teacher to write on their report. But for me, that was a compliment, because what she was really saying is that I have an incredible imagination and that I'm very creative. And today, those are very, very important skills to have in the workforce that we find ourselves. I'm using those skills on a daily basis. And let me tell you, it is a lot of fun to use those skills as well. So I highly recommend it to those of you that have not tried. Zaid, you can go up next. Okay. Hi, Steve. Hi. So I wanted, I wanted to ask you, why did you get so excited about science and technology and why should we get excited about it too? Wow, uh, well that's a very easy question. First of all, I get excited about science and technology because it covers an incredibly wide area of topics of interest. So for example, I love gadgets. I happen to love computers. I love robotics. I love coding. And that is all science. So if you love those things too, then you are already loving science without even realizing it. Azra, you can go up next. Hi, Steve. Hello, Azra. Um, is science really everywhere and it, is it important? No, there's no science anywhere. And no, I'm joking, of course it's really important. And yes, it is everywhere. From the time you use your cell phone to wake you up, you know when your alarm goes beep, 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 to the time you turn on your TV. Those are all the obvious ones. But what about the ones you haven't noticed? A lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And I think it's very important that we don't take these things for granted. I mean, you get into a car and you drive to school. That car is way safer than it ever was before. How did they make that car safer on the road? Well, using science and different materials. And of course, what about the food that you eat? It tastes fresh and lasts longer Thanks to science, we take these things for granted. Steve, thank you so much. Your energy is infectious. We're going to take a short break from the conversation and catch up with you in the squad later. Right now, it's time for today's Brain Teaser. In today's Brain Teaser, we are going to ask all of you to really flex those mental muscles as we pull out another mathematical problem. And I have to warn you, it's a tricky one, so listen carefully. Let's take a look. How do you write 23 using only the number 2? How do you write 34 using only the number 3? 
How do you write 56 using only the number 5? And finally, how do you write 100 using only the number 9? If you think you have the right answer, then send it to our WhatsApp line or you can enter on our Instagram at Technosquad S3. Remember, only the first correct answer will be accepted as the winner. And you can win an awesome data bundle. So, get entering! Welcome back to it. You're still hanging out with me, Shanice. And me, <laughs> Do you ever think about how we know what we know? Like why humans need air to breathe and why plants need air to grow? It's science. Science helps us find answers and gives us information to build knowledge that we need to know how to overcome the challenges and design technology to help us do so. Our men in the squad were out learning all about science. Let's take a look. <laughs> okay, so when I got here, I wasn't quite convinced that science is everywhere, but now I'm starting to believe it. Well, don't take my word for it. Let's go see what else they've got to show us. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Awesome, I'm good as well, thanks. So our Super Science Weekend program um, is an exciting program where we take everyday science that kids and adults see every day, um, but we just expand it just a little bit bigger to so make it more exciting and, and for them to see the bigger table. picture that they see every day. So the demo that I will be presenting um, for the kids today will be Magic Milk. Um, it's all about what the components of milk is and how soap actually plays a role in that components and breaking them down and we'll actually get a bit of a closer look into seeing the movement as those components are being broken down by the soap itself. Dipping it into the soap and I'm going to place it there and as I move it around the soap we start to see them move Once Jane Clear had showed the squad the experiment, it was time for them to give it a try. Okay, you guys can come a little closer, grab a cotton bud. There's one over there, you can have this one. Now you can move it into the milk. So what I learned was that the soap breaks down the fat. That's why we use um, the soap to wash our bodies and wash the dishes. Hello everyone. How are you all doing today? Awesome, right? So my name's Nadir, and I'm gonna be your scientist today, guys, and I'm gonna be doing all these cool experiments that you see behind me. Next up, they met Nadir, who prepared some super-sized science experiments and demonstrations. All right, how awesome is that, guys? The science show was super exciting and it wasn't boring at all. It was so loud and I liked it. Three, two, one. All right, so did you guys enjoy that experiment? Yeah. Awesome, I'm really glad. So we're gonna move on to the next one. So the aim of the science show is basically to um, illustrate to kids the, uh, a fun method of viewing so science, right? Is, um, science is obviously all around us, powder. we see it everywhere so we that we look, and this is basically and, um, to show that even simple household ingredients can be used and combined to create really cool experiments, but it's also a simpler way to illustrate much larger concepts. <laughs> Alright, then one more time. The other right. experiment that I really, really liked was the bomb that he made. He used um, a type of acid and he used a zinc metal. What is unexpected? <laughs> yeah, out of all five experiments, the ones that I enjoyed the most was uh, the one where he made a huge candle uh, and the one where he blew fire out of his mouth. I actually do think that science is everywhere around us because after everything I saw, um, it was really cool and I realised that it is everywhere. 
Guys, I've blown up my fingertips, made magic milk, and seen some amazing experiments. But I think I'm gonna try the human gyosphere while you guys head back to the studio. Squad, today's one of those days where I'm having major FOMO. Did you see those cool science experiments? And I think the squad agrees that science is everywhere, even in the kitchen. Guys, be sure to check out your local science centers to see what's happening. Right now, it's time to catch up with Steve and the squad. Let's jump straight in. Zahir, you can go up next. Okay, so what, what makes a good scientist, Steve? That is one of my favorite questions and a very simple one to answer. Someone who is curious. Are you curious? Well, mm. I, I think that we need to know that as a scientist, you have to ask questions and you have to question answers. Real scientists don't accept all the answers. We never ever claim that it is an exact science. Be honest enough to tell you where we are in the process and we would love for you to contribute as well so we can get to the answer as soon as possible. Azra, you can ask our final question for today. What do you think the future holds? Ah, you, you say that the future as if it's still coming. The future is here. And for those of you that specifically want to focus on being scientists, of course, without the injuries, uh, I would suggest that you become a citizen scientist. When you dip your toes in the bath, and then you go, ay, 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 because the hot water is burning your toes, you know what you do? You go and turn the cold tap on. Why? Because you've just made a discovery. The discovery is that what hot water will burn your toes. So you'd be amazed that people like you if you want to be part of the future, which you already are, get involved in coding, robotics, AI, physics, computers, all of those things are going to be the tools that are used in the future. And the sooner you get involved, the quicker you'll be a part of that future. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today and making science fun. We loved having you. To all of you at home, We'd love to hear from you, so let us know if you have any questions of your own on WhatsApp or Instagram. Welcome back, and if you just tuned in, where have you been? On today's show, we're learning all about how science is all around us. Not that I do any of these things, but science is involved in cooking, eating, breathing, driving, and even playing. Human life has become unimaginable without science. I can definitely agree to that. Now, a place where you know you'll definitely find science is in the tech lab. What's good, Techno Squad? Today we're at the Stream Lab where we're always doing something new, fun, and interactive. Facts, girl! And today we're doing something super, super fun, and Robin will tell our squad what's coming up. So today we're making our very own model rocket. Mm -hmm. So, what do we need? So, we'll need some glue, then we'll need a body tube, some vector control fins and then an engine mount tube, a nose cone, and then some wadding. And then we'll also need a shock cord and then a Kevlar cord as well, and then also part of the engine mount mechanism. Ooh, sounds complicated, but what's the first step? The first step would be to grab your tube over here, and then we'll take this engine mount part over here, grab this part here, which is going to sort of help the motor stay put, and then simply insert it like that. And then the next part would be to take this circular little tubing and then place it inside it like that so that it doesn't move around since you don't want things to move around mid-flight, all right? <laughs> and then next step, we simply place it in at one end. You could decide which end you want to be the bottom. And there you have your engine mount tube. Then the next thing we would do is grab the Kevlar shock cord and then tie it to the nose cone bit. So what we'll do is just make two knots to make sure that it doesn't come out, since in the middle of space flight, it, things do get a little shaky. 
The next part we're going to do is then thread it inside over here to the bottom until it comes down to the end. So you would notice that rockets aren't box shaped and they also don't have flat surfaces that will go up since that will increase something called drag, all right? And that is the opposite of lift. Lift is then created by the thrust that you get from an engine once it's been ignited, all right? And you actually just want to use as little fuel as possible. Since if you do increase your fuel amount, you also get a heavier rocket, then you have to increase more fuel, and it's just a never-ending thing. I hope I got the right side. So now the wheel will leave this bit to dry. Ta -da! Yeah, that's what it would look like after it's, everything's been dried and everything's all right. So you also notice over here that there is a section called the lug. So how else will we then attach it to the launch pad? Since this part over here will be occupied by the engine, we will simply use the lug as a guidance mechanism to make sure that the rocket does stay upright when it goes off. And there oh. you have it. We also have a few stickers, so let's put on a few stickers. I think Any I like one. this one. Okay, great. Uh, stickers are really important if you're going oh, to keep another. track of what your rocket looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. just like that. And we are just about done and ready for launch. There you have it, Techno Squad. We just made our very own model rocket and you can do it too. Don't forget to check out our socials at Techno Squad S3. In today's brain teaser, we gave you a tricky mathematical problem to solve. I have to admit, even Hack and I struggled at first. But once you figure out the first one, well then, you've basically got them all. Let me show you. We asked you how to write down 23 using only the number 2. The answer is by using fractions. 22 plus 2 over 2 equals 23. The same applies to 34, 56 and 100. 33 plus 3 over 3 equals 34. 55 plus 5 over 5 equals 56. 99 plus 9 over 9 equals 100. I hope you managed to get it right. And if you didn't, remember, there's always a next week. Pack, I know we're in studio and there are reminders of science and technology all around us. The space station model, the Rubik's Cube, the cameras, the social media icons, the screens, the planes, the devices, and the fact that all of you are able to watch this show. Heck, I think you're forgetting something though. You're forgetting yourself. Absolutely, I'm the first of my kind. The very first robot on an SAPC children's show. Tech is advancing and I'm glad that Techno Squad is leading the way and we challenge others to join the tech revolution. Guys, we've come to the end of another amazing show. We hope you've come to learn that science is everywhere and that it plays an incredible role in our daily lives. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Bye!